is about to head into an election year facing hostile forces at home and abroad. So here to talk about his plans to deal with the biggest issues facing America, the world, and everything else, <laughs> please welcome back <laughs> White House Press Secretary Catherine Jean-Pierre. Yay! Yeah, I, it happens. Sometimes my mouth just doesn't act the way it's supposed to. It's a parchment. Yeah, so so it's, it's coming from Whoopi Goldberg. It's, it is. It's it coming is with love. It's coming from love. It's coming it's from love. Well, we wanted to start by saying it feels like a minute since a few of us saw you because yes. the White House throws quite a Christmas party. Yes. It was like a visit to the North Pole. Yes. Mm -hmm. it, yeah, you're right. It the was, way it's set up, it's so beautiful. Thank oh. you thank you for, for the folks who came. It's always great to have you there. And it was a beautiful, it, the, the White House could not be more beautiful than it is this that, time. Is that how it always is decorated? <laughs> oh, was, I, I mean, yeah, you gotta come back. Yeah, the Christmas trees oh, yeah. yeah. every, yeah. every day, yeah. I'm yeah. coming back. Yeah. Can I just say one thing, Whoopi, I saw you on Sunday when you gave the wonderful tribute to Billy Crystal for <sighs> the for the Kennedy Center Honors. Right. Your words were so powerful, so impactful. And one of the things that hit me, and I think hit many of us in the room, is when you talked about Robin Williams. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it was, it's just, it was, it's always a magical night, the yeah. Kennedy Center Honors, yeah. and one of my favorite nights uh, of, the, of the year. But I just wanted to say that. Thank you because for that. it was beautiful. Thank you. And I know you all were, were very, very yes. proud. Yeah. Yeah, in a couple yes, weeks. In a couple weeks. It's in a couple, couple weeks. weeks. Yeah. 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 So, Beautiful. Um, let me ask you this, because we were Hi, just Sunny. talking about Liz Cheney. <laughs> Hi, my friend. Um, over the weekend, Liz Cheney said that a second Trump presidency means that the U.S. would be sleepwalking into a dictatorship. Alyssa mentioned that she thought we, were care we would be careening into um, a dictatorship. How serious, in, in the administration's view, does the former president president present? So I want to be careful because in my position, I can't talk about 2024, any upcoming um, elections. But what I can say is this, we have to remember why this president decided to run back in 2020. He believed that our democracy was under attack. Right? He believed the soul of our nation needed to be saved, needed to be protected. And that's why he ran. And since his presidency, even obviously before then, during the last campaign, he has talked about protecting our democracy. He's talked about everything that we need to do to fight for our democracy. And it's not just us. It's not just all of us here having this conversation or the president. In 2022, in 2023, after those, and currently in this election, after the midterm in 2022 specifically, you saw a majority of Americans say they want our democracy to be protected. They want our freedoms to be protected. For example, women being able to make a decision on their own bodies to be protected. Yeah. And, and so the president stands with majority of the American people on those issues and so many other issues, obviously. And here's the thing, I'll, I'll say this, as it relates to January 6th, what we saw on January 6th in 2021, it was, it was dangerous, horrific, and it was an attack on our democracy. The president has spoken to that multiple times right. about how dangerous that day was. Yeah. And it is wrong, it is wrong to want to suspend our Constitution. It is wrong to want to turn over the will of the people. Mm -hmm. It is wrong to use rhetoric, rhetoric for violence. Yeah. It is wrong, it is wrong, it is wrong. And the president, again, stands with majority of the, of the American people when it comes to protecting our democracy. And yet Trump, over the weekend, said that Joe Biden was a threat to democracy. Ha! Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can't I mean, say that in a... What it, a projection. Yeah. Yeah. Holy moly. Well, let's talk about um, Israel right now. The truce, yeah. be, the truce between Israel and Hamas has collapsed. Um, but there are still about 130 hostages, that, um, including eight Americans. What is happening behind the scenes to get negotiations, negotiations back on track? And how do you negotiate with a terrorist group that is reportedly engaging in brutal rape, sexual violence, and warns that October 7th was just the beginning? So much there in that question, and you're correct. We have to remember what happened on October 7th. October 7th, we saw a terrorist organization, Hamas, brutalize slaughter innocent people. That's what we saw. And what Israel has been... there were rapes also. There were rapes, as, as you just laid yeah, out. There right. were rapes, and I want to be very clear on this. Mm -hmm. Rape is irre irreprehensible. Yeah. 
Uh, and when you use rape as a form of a weapon of war, that's reprehensible. And we have called well, that out. It's an international law crime. It, it, exactly, right? And that is, we have to call that out. And that is something that the president and we all will continue to do. And um, so, look, as you just said, the, human, uh, the humanitarian uh, pause is now, has ended. We're having conversations with Israel. We're having conversations with Egypt and others uh, in the region to continue that conversation. But really, the group or organization that is stopping that is Hamas. Mm -hmm. Because as you're asking me about the rape and the brutalization of women, one of the things that Israel has asked for is for a list of these women who are being held hostage. And they are not going to give up. Israel's not going to give up on these women. Mm -hmm. And so, and, their babies and, too. and their there babies. were three year old, a third, three month old baby was And Hamas kidnapped. is refusing, oh refusing, refusing to provide that list. And so, therefore, we, the, the, um, the, the humanitarian pause has paused. But we want that to continue yes. because what has happened with that humanitarian pause that lasted for a couple of days is that we were able to bring almost 100 hostages home back to their families and to their loved ones and also continue that humanitarian aid uh, that the people in Gaza truly, truly need. One of the things, too, that I want people to understand and know is that even though the humanitarian pause is, no, is, is stopped for the moment, Israel has continued to bring in or get in humanitarian aid, which is really important, at the same level during the humanitarian pause. Wow. So that is important for folks to note, but we want to, we want to go back into having that pause. Yes. <laughs> I want to ask, the, the White House has been very unequivocal, as you just were, about the, the sexual violence carried out against Israeli women. Um, the House Democrats are planning to introduce a resolution this week, both condemning the use of rape in war against Israeli women, um, seemingly in response to progressive caucus uh, chairwoman's comments this past weekend, Rep Jayapal, basically saying we need to be balanced in our criticism, which seemed, was interpreted by many, myself included, to downplay the horrors of the uh, actions of October 7th. Does the White House uh, support this resolution? And do you think the representative needs to clarify her remarks? So look, I'm going to let the rep representative speak for herself. I'm, I just can't speak for her. I speak for the President of the United States. I am the White House Press Secretary, obviously, so that's who I speak for. And what I can say, and I said this in Sarah's question when I answered it, which is, it is, when it comes to rape, that's reprehensible. When it comes to using rape as a weapon of war, that's reprehensible. We are, we are very, very clear about denouncing Hamas's actions, and that's what the president has been clear about, and that's, as administration more, more broadly, we're going to continue to be really, Do you think really, because really of her perch, though, as a progressive leader, she should clarify her remarks? I, I speak for the president. She has to speak for herself. We have been very, very What's clear. What's so progressive very about clear. her anyway? The word progressive is a misnomer. Well, she's the chair of the progressive she's extreme, caucus. She's <laughs> extreme left, maybe, yeah. but progressive. That's, I'm progressive. That's fair. Well, I don't like that term. <laughs> well, let me, let me, uh, let me uh -huh. ask you this, yeah. uh, Madam uh, Press Secretary. Uh, the vice president's office, in describing her recent remarks to the president of Egypt, said this, under no circumstances will the U.S. permit the forced relocation of Palestinians from Gaza or the West Bank, the besiegement of Gaza, or the redrawing of the borders of Gaza. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin warned the rising Palestinian death toll, which some are reporting is about 20,000, could be more, could replace a tactical victory with a strategic defeat. President Biden is also on record challenging the number of Palestinian casualties. Um, does he understand the deep division about this conflict that exists not only here in the United States, but around the world, and how America, in many respects, is at odds with the UN, Doctors Without Borders, the Red Cross, et cetera, on this conflict? So let's take, got to take a step back for a second. Um, so. Obviously, we're, going to, we're having discussions with our Israeli counterparts about being more precise, being more deliberate in how they move forward with this war. We've had those conversations. We also have to understand what they're up against. When you think about Hamas, it is a terrorist organization. And what they do, what they do is they shelter in place in hospitals, in schools, in residential buildings and put the risk and the, the lives at risk of, their, of civilians. Right. That's what they do. Mm -hmm. And what Israel is doing is trying to make sure that civilians are taken out of that risk. One of the things that they did over the weekend is they put out a map for civilians to know where it is the safe, safest place to be. And that is unheard of, unfathomable, to do that during this modern kind of war that we're in. And so 
I'm going to be very clear here. It is, it, we do not want to see a civilian life taken. One life is too many. It is too many. And, uh, and we've been very clear that Israel has the right to defend itself. And they do. It was a terrorist organization that attacked their, um, that attacked their civilians. And so we're going to continue to be steadfast. But of course, we're having those conversations, making sure that how they're moving forward is indeed uh, deliberate and precise. And aligned with international and aligned, law. And, and, and aligned with international law, obviously. Yes, indeed. But we're going to continue to tell people there's Hamas and then there's the Palestinian people. Yep, yep. Okay? Let's make sure we all understand. Because they're under, <laughs> they're, you know, they're. They're, cap they're captive of Hamas too. Yeah, I mean. it's, it's beyond, beyond.